first question. Let's give it to Breeze. Hey, Mohammed, this is Breeze with the MMA Breeze. I wanted to ask you, you know, your brother's obviously accomplished a lot lately. How has that motivated you with this upcoming tournament? And have you worked with him at all in the preparations to this bout? Uh, it's motivated me a lot. I mean, we, me and him both trained in Denver, Colorado, and uh, at Elevation, you know, fight team. And um, just seeing his process and all the work he put in and all the work I put in, uh, we, we motivate each other, you know, his work ethic and uh, I feed off of how he works and how hard he works, and uh, that translates into how I work hard. And who who wins in a fight between you and Usman? Me. And you and Kamara. <laughs> Thank oh, you so it's, much. It's, it's a different weight class, man. <laughs> Good luck. For sure. Thank you. Up next, let's go with Tariq. How you doing, Mohammed? This is Tariq with the Havoc Hour. Uh, so just throwing a couple of names out here. Israel Adesanya, you know, older brother Kamaru. And I mean, obviously, you know, Francis over in the heavyweight division in the UFC. What is it going to mean to you to win this tournament and bring another championship home to, to Africa, to Nigeria? Uh, it'll be a great honor. Um, that's my journey. That's my path. Uh, that's what I envision. And, uh, and, and that's what I, that's what I'm going to make happen. You know, so uh, it's it'll be a great honor for my family, for my culture, and just for Africa alone. You know, we're doing a lot of great things right now, and we're just going to keep it up. Thanks for the time, man. Good luck on Thursday. No, thank you. Tanai? Hey, Mohamed. Tanai from MMA Island. How's it going, man? I'm doing good, brother. Um, can, I wanted to ask you how, what made you decide to sign with the PFL? Was it the tournament system or anything else, or just the roster strength? Um, it's not necessarily a tournament, it's a season. And the, the season format, uh, I really, really enjoyed. And, uh, and you know, we, we have regular season, we have playoffs, and when we have the championship. That resonated with me because I play football, you know? So uh, it, it's, it just made it feel like like I'm just in the NFL. This is the professional fighters, this is the PFL. So this is the NFL of MMA, you know? So I, I look at it like that and I really just fell in love with it. And uh, of course, you know, we're getting paid to do this. So we're not getting, you know, we're not getting 50 cents, you know? So this was a, uh, it was a great, it was a great opportunity. It was a great opportunity for me to keep getting better in the sport of MMA and um, get paid to do it. Awesome. And how has your experience been in the PFL bubble? Jesus, uh, it's been it's been rough. Uh, it's a it's it's tough, man. Seventeen days doing anything or being cooped up in your room is is is, is hard. But PFL has done an exceptional job of containing uh, everybody, containing everybody in the bubble, and then uh, and it's just been a. It's, I'm I'm good. I can't I can't. No complaints. Just ready to rock. Thank you, man. Good luck on Thursday. No worries. Thank you. Barcelona. Jim Barcelona, Miami Herald. Curious if your brother will be in your corner for this fight. Uh, my brother will be here. What is it like when you guys are able to have that, have each other in your corners for these big fights? It's a great, it's a great feeling. It's a great, you know, his, uh, his IQ, his mindset, uh, it just oozes off on me. And uh, I just know how to win when he's there. And I know how to win, you know, it's just, uh, it's just being able to know what your brother would do. You know, I put myself in his shoes and he puts himself in mine and uh, knowing what I got to do to get the job done. And uh, it's just, I just feed off of his energy and uh, go out there and get the job done. And for this one, did you bring anybody in to spar with someone different to get ready for this fight? Uh, yeah, I actually did. Uh, I brought a UFC, uh, a UFC middleweight fighter, Razak Al Hassan. Uh, I've trained with him my whole career now for the most part. And uh, and uh, even when we went to Colorado, he's came out there with us as well. So uh, he he wanted to do the, he, he could, he came right after his fight actually in the UFC. He came and did the full 17 days with me. So I'm very, very grateful for him. And uh, me and him, you know, it's, he's a fighter. So we've just been going at it. And uh, he'll tell you he's hurting right now. I've been beating him up for 17 days and he's ready to go home. So uh, it's uh, it's been it's been a rough one, but uh, you know it's been a rough one, but it's it's all gonna be worth it at the end. Well, lastly for me, and you mentioned hurting, I don't want you to be mad at me. I know you're a big tough guy, but I'm not gonna count your brother out in a fight with you. 
<laughs> nah, you can't count him out for nothing, but it's just a different weight class, man. It's a, a hundred more pounds hitting you. It's a different, it's, it's just, it's just different. And I, you learn that real fast in the sport of MMA. Those weight classes is a big deal, you know, and, and uh, you guys go up to try to fight a different guy in a different weight class and you learn real, real quick that uh, let me just stay where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, James. Hi, Mohammed. Uh, James McLeay from Sports Kita here. Do you prefer to be called Mo? Uh, my coaches and my uh, my teammates call me Mo, Mohammed. It doesn't matter. It's just Mo. Everybody's called me Mo or Mohammed my whole life. So whatever you, whatever it feels comfortable for you. Okay, thanks, man. Um, first question I have you is: How has life changed for you because of the PFL ever since you joined? Oh man. Uh, to make it frankly, life's gotten better, you know, uh, life is, life has been hard, you know, especially with the Corona, with everything going on, PFL has done a, a wonderful job. They took care of me during Corona and e even still to this point now, just to be able to feed my family, uh, survive, you know, so at the end of the day, this world we live in is, you know, people work nine to fives every day and, you know, there's only a select few can afford to do what we do, which is fight and be able to survive. So I'm very, very blessed to be here and uh, I'm going to make it count. Terrific. And uh, what was your reaction when you first found out your PFL debut was against uh, Brandon Sales? Uh, I was excited, you know, because uh, he's a tough guy, tough opponent. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I just look forward to getting in there and putting, going to work and putting in work. Okay, thanks, Mo. Uh, have, a, have a good fight on Thursday, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Tom Ward, please. Hi Mo, Tom Moore from Gibby Sport here. Who do you think is your biggest threat in this tournament? Uh, I, I like to just I like to just focus on one opponent at a time, you know. And in the season format, now it's not a tournament. Uh, if it was a tournament, it would be totally different. This is a season that we're in. This is the we're in regular season of the PFL, and uh, and I'm just and I'm just focused on one fight at a time, one opponent. Everybody here is in you know is running for a million dollars, so nobody here is easy. <laughs> you know, this this season is not easy. This is a tough season. Everybody wants to win a million dollars, so they're going to go out there and put their best foot forward, you know, like you're supposed to. So I just really just try to block it out and focus on one fight at a time, one fight at a time. We got four fights this year, so four fights to a million dollars. So after this one, I have three more. So that's how I'm looking forward to. Everybody here is tough, and I'm going to give everybody the same attention. Obviously, you've kind of alluded to it a bit, but... Um... Your brother's been called out by a, a certain Conor McGregor, and you kind of talked about weight classes there. How do you think a fight would go between them? Oh, man, my brother would demolish him. Simple as that. You know, he, my, my brother is already big for that weight class anyway, so this guy just wants to come up there and, and test the waters. Uh, you know, like he says, there'll be a red panty night, so we'll, 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 we'll love that. You know, but uh, my brother will destroy him in that aspect of that's his division. Amazing. Good luck. Thank you. Up next, Dylan, please. Hey there, Mohammed. Appreciate you making some time. No, appreciate you. I was just curious because on some of the, you know, aggregator kind of sites, I'm noticing your nickname is The Motor, which I presume is commentary on your cardio. I'm kind of wondering how important is the ability to weaponize pace within your overall fighter skill set? Uh, it's very important. It's, uh, you know, when at the end of the day, you know, everybody goes into this, thing called fighting with certain gifts and certain talents, you know? And, and of course you, you train and you learn and you work hard, but uh, that name came with me from football and, and just in football, I didn't know why, but I always run everywhere. If, if, it, if the football was thrown left, I'm running there. If it's thrown right, I'm running there. Uh, wherever the receivers are, I'm running to the receivers. So my coaches used to just call me the motor because I never stopped moving until the, the whistle blow. And I brought that same mindset into MMA and uh, like my coaches say, like Vinny and Cody say, my, my cardio is a weapon, you know? So when I go out there and people throw jabs and throw right hands and bombs, my cardio is the exact same thing. And I'm going to use that in the cage. And I'm kind of curious too, because you were talking about the specific field within this season and how you have to have like a myopic kind of focus on your immediate opponent. And to that point, I'm kind of wondering, like in doing tape study on Brandon sales, like what sort of stylistic proclivities you may have noticed he brings to the table. Uh, he likes to be aggressive. Uh, you know, he likes to be aggressive. He's been aggressive to a, a lot of the guys that I've watched on tape that watched him fight. And he, you know, he's a tough guy. He's a military guy. So he's, he's coming in there with that tough mindset. 
and he's just coming in there trying to be aggressive. So, but I don't, he's never faced nobody like me. And, um, and it's going to show, it's going to show come Thursday night. Thanks for the time, Muhammad. Appreciate no it. No problem. Thank you. Darnell. Hi, Muhammad. This is Darnell Giovanni with MMA Island. Thank, hey, what's just, up, bro? Just wondering, uh, training with the likes of Francis and Ganu, how, how, how did that help your game? Oh man, it's uh, it shot my game up tremendously. I've you know in the, in the last couple of weeks before I came into the bubble, I've trained with Francis. I've you know I've moved around with Alistair Overeem. I moved around with Curtis Blaze. I've I've trained with all types of guys, and and just to be able to get these type of caliber guys at the in, at the heavyweight division and be able to move around with these guys, pick their brain, train with them, has just boosted my confidence to the roof because I know I can compete and I can do what I can do what I'm here to do, you know, and it's, that's really what it comes down to, you know, if you want to beat the best, you got to train with the best, you know, you got to feel the best. And I feel like I've done that and I'm ready to put it to the test. Is that a fight you would want in the future against Francis? Uh, Francis is my brother. Uh, I'll let him, you know, I'll let him, you know, enjoy his, his side of things right now. I'm on the PFL and, you know, I'm going to focus on winning this PFL belt and then uh, we can readdress that conversation. Thanks so much, mom. Good luck. Thank you. Jake Foley, please. Hey, Muhammad. Jake Foley here from Overtime Heroics. Um, being born in jury on PFL and ESPN. Jake, can you repeat that? You cut out a little bit. Yes. Being born in Nigeria, what is the feeling like being able to represent the green and white flag on PFL and ESPN? Man, it's... Uh... It's, it's it's surreal. It's a dream come true. Uh, just to be able to be here and be able to be the what the only or second African fighter here. Uh, actually, the only African fighter on this card on this whole on this, in this whole season. It's a uh, it's a real real blessing, and I feel an honor, and I feel like I'm gonna uh, I feel a, a honor to represent my people the right way, and I will. Thank you so much. Good luck on Thursday night. Thank you, Alex. Please. Hi, Mohammed. It's Alex from Cape Side Press. Um, you have five first round finishes in your career. Are you looking to get that quick six uh, points in your fight on Thursday? And also, um, I please please let us know what uh, you and uh, your brother do to be completely yoked because uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's it's insane. <laughs> Um, yes, um, I, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to go forward and I'm going to pressure this guy and I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to listen to my coaches and, and, and I'm, if, if I, if it happens, if God willing, I get him out in the first round, I get it. I'm not going to rush it, you know, at this, at this level and at this sport, you don't want to go in anything, rushing anything. I want to go in there with my, with, with a calm mindset and, uh, execute my game plan and, if everything in my game plan, you know, God willing, my game plan goes right, he'll be out of there in the first round. And uh, and to answer your second question, my mom just feeds us a lot of African food. <laughs> we just eat African food as much as we can. I mean, I've been on a diet, you know, for the most part, but right after right after this fight and I'm going home, I, I'm gonna take about two, three days and just eat nothing but African food. So my mom will cook, you know, pot of yam and soup. And then, uh, you know, she cooks the rice with the, uh, the white rice with the uh, with the stew and uh she knows i love i love fish and i love my chicken and my steak so she'll cook that up for us and have that ready to come before we get home and uh that's all the energy i need when i used to get tired or feel low energy i just eat her food and she just shoot me right back up so ask my mom looks like i need some african looks like i need some african food <laughs> good luck oh for sure brother you definitely need to try it up next head kick audio please Hey, what's up? This is Steve from Head Cake Audio. How you doing? I'm doing good, brother. All right. Well, I am enjoying this very much. Uh, you're a ball of energy. It's, it's a nice change of pace. <laughs> oh, no. Appreciate you, brother. All right. So uh, my first question for you is, uh, this is uh, uh, a season. So every fight matters, but there's also points that matter. Do you think that's going to change your fighting style or you know if, if at all have you had to make any adjustments whatsoever not at all uh, if anything i just been just getting better at just being a mixed martial arts fighter you know that's like, well, that's what it comes down to is just being a better fighter you know i've really it's 
you know, a certain guys, certain guys probably have to make adjustments, but I just, just kept getting better and getting better and getting better. And I'm just excited to just go put the finished product out there in the cage for the world to see, you know, I've been spending a lot of time. I've, I've been meticulous about my training. I've, I've got, I've moved my whole life up to Colorado, you know, and I've completely jumped in and indulged all of the, all that they have to offer. And I'm just ready to go out there and execute the game plan. Awesome. And then the shirt there, is that uh, U of A? Oh uh, yeah, of course. Bear down. Yeah. That's yeah. where I went to school, man. So, you know, I got to rep my school. Oh, well, I'm out of here in Tucson, Arizona. So, oh man. Yeah. Down. That's the, that's, that's where I'm, uh, you already know, brother. Appreciate hey. that. Yeah. Tucson stand up. Uh, hey, yeah. Bear down, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for your time. No, no. Bear down, brother. Last question to Ronald, please. Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. Mohammed, like any like any other athlete who has another sibling who's doing well, they're always going to be at that extra pressure and extra eyes sit on the other sibling. So how have you been able to focus and not allow the noise to interfere in the process? The number one thing for me is focus. And I, I like to, and I, I've, I've played football a long time. So pressure has always been there. And I and I've learned as and my life has gone on. I've just learned how to control that pressure, and I just and channel it into energy that you use in the cage, you know. So um, I know how to kind of channel my energy and channel the pressure into energy that I can use against my opponent. And um, I, and I've been doing it now for a while. It's not my first fight, you know, with my brother being the champ. You know, it's not my last. So I just, I just, ch I just channel all that pressure into positive energy and go out there and execute the game plan. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much, Mo. Appreciate you for coming out today. No problem. Thank you.